the start of uh, this uh, game, ECG detection game. What you meant to do in this game is uh, you have ECG waveforms scrolling on the screen and you meant to click on ones that uh, are abnormal. So it should be pretty straightforward, especially when you know what a normal ECG looks like. It's not, doesn't look like that. This is abnormal ECG, so I keep uh, getting hits. This is also abnormal. If I don't click on it, I get a uh, miss. Uh, this is also abnormal. Get another miss. Uh, this is abnormal. If I click on it, I get a hit. So greens are good, reds are bad. Another hit. I'm waiting for a normal one. I don't remember what the ratio is. This should be 40 60. I think uh, normal to abnormal. So, yeah, so that was normal. I correctly rejected it. What we want to do now, and the advantage of having synthetic uh, data like this, synthetic ECG, EEG, is that you could design an algorithm and AI, machine learning, or whatever, that uh, will play this game. And then you can compete with a computer, with a machine, see who is better. Uh, especially if you would be, especially interesting if you're a cardiologist or an ECG technician. So be competing against the bot, seeing this thing we also design using a bot. Um, we're currently using a fuzzy logic algorithm to, to train. It's a machine, machine, it's an explainable AI machine learning algorithm that we can actually tell what is it doing and uh, later we might be using uh, neural networks as well which pretty much everyone under the sun is using this day so might uh, do that as well i just got a false alarm when clicking on the normal uh, ecg and my score went uh, went down Okay, so we also started GPT-4. So we currently, we have this structure. We have both GPT-4 and GitHub Copilot. What we do is um, use uh, co uh, use uh, ChatGPT for the general context of things. It uh, seems to be better at keeping a broader context of the project might have here a, let's do quick format document okay and a comment at the end saying a more code is coming in the next prompt assuming gpt is aware what's the current prompt and what's the next prompt is yeah already can tell um, we're having some uh, errors coming through that's uh, happening for this um, analysis result so this is this analysis result is a result of um, fuzzy logic in the app python file it will find where is the file actually located so i had the chat gpt response it's talking about global variables we have this analyze waveform a uh, flask roots pretty sure we have more of them We'll check them in a second. In the signal, we're looking at three features at the moment. Uh, we're looking at frequency, amplitude, and the number of um, positive and negative peaks. So ideally, we want to display them all in here. Just keep uh, going to html next uh, let's do the waveforms next just so it knows what the waveforms are well then uh, just so we don't uh, stop overloading a uh, gpt4 we will not be generating code with it we'll be asking it to generate prompts from what we discuss and then i'll use uh, a github copilot for actually doing the code we have the game logic as well just format this document quickly it's giving you some general stuff 
about the code which we already went through previous streams but I'm happy to go over it again we'll go over the relevant bits for what we're trying to do generally yeah explain what the uh, game is uh, doing um, it's available on the site you can go uh, try it out play with it and now we making a bot that will uh, play the game and then potentially can compete with the bot so at the bottom here it's meant to be the result of the uh, fuzzy logic um, analysis that's essentially a machine learning that has uh, that will now be going over I'll explain more about how it works yeah this error here yeah I'm pretty sure I know why it's uh, happening just open this full screen this patch yeah we're using oh I always forget that control C is what happens with uh, Windows users um, is if you press control C in this case it will stop the execution of the flask application instead of just copying the terminal results so I'm looking at uh, uh, what am I looking at this bit a control shift C let's pop it into I think it might be too much for copilot to handle so we have the game logic what did it say canvas click event handling game loop integration with backend result display performance all ah, right we have this thing where as your score goes uh, higher the stuff on the screen starts uh, moving faster so i think uh, from memory every 50 points it um, the speed increases so now we minus 50 so it goes back if you losing points then it goes back to uh, be slower again air handling yeah it's always suggesting to do more air handling which is okay okay so the error message indicates that the fuzzy logic system is unable to calculate a crisp output because the system is too sparse okay we'll need more explanation on this one i know vaguely what this means uh, it's essentially uh, my hypothesis is that um, the outputs are not uh, normalized so we essentially need a display of um, how the fuzzy logic is doing its uh, decisions so we have this uh, flask application we need to troubleshoot how the fuzzy logic system is uh, working essentially how it, it is making decisions regards the output uh, can you recap what this fuzzy logic system meant to be detecting your flask application which incorporates fuzzy logic analysis is designed to analyze ecg electrocardiogram waveforms the purpose of this system is to detect abnormalities in ecg patterns here's a recap of how it's meant to work and what it's detecting input waveforms the system takes ecg waveforms as input these waveforms represent the electrical activity of the heart and are typically characterized by distinct components like P waves, QRS complexes, and T waves. Dominant frequency, extracted using fast Fourier transform, FFT. It represents the most prominent frequency component in the waveform, number of peaks, detected using peak detection algorithms in the Skippy library. Peaks can correspond to the various waves in the ECG, like the P, Q, R, S, and T waves. Amplitude, calculated as the difference between the maximum and minimum values in the waveform. It indicates the strength of the heart's electrical signal. Normalization. The extracted features are normalized against global minimum and maximum values to ensure consistency and comparability between different waveform samples. The application uses scikit fuzzy to implement the fuzzy logic system. Fuzzy sets and membership functions are defined for each feature, frequency, peaks, and amplitude, and for the output variable, which is the level of abnormality. Fuzzy rules are established to determine how the input features contribute to the output. For example, a rule might state that if the frequency is high and the number of peaks is low, then the likelihood of an abnormality is high. The system outputs a score or value indicating the likelihood of an abnormality in the ECG waveform. This score is derived from the fuzzy rules and membership functions, representing the system's assessment of how abnormal the waveform is. Purpose, detection of abnormal ECG patterns. 
The primary goal is to identify patterns that deviate from normal ECG characteristics, which might indicate various cardiac conditions or anomalies. Okay, so this is correct. Uh, sounds sounds legit. Just a recap of uh, what we are doing. So yes, we're looking at the dominant frequencies using FFT. Uh, the number of peaks then could indicate if uh, then this number is lower then P, Q, R, S, T, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then uh, it's highly likely that the ECG is abnormal. Amplitude could be tricky because if, um, if the amplitude is way too high, it could mean there is some sort of uh, noise. But uh, if, it's, uh, if it's too low as well, could mean that the system is just not working, that no ECG is being generated. This would not necessarily mean abnormal ECG, but if the amplitude is within a certain range, then it should be uh, okay. Um, specifically, could somehow, by looking at the amplitude, uh, we'll be primarily looking at the R peak or well, because that's the highest uh, peak in the uh, ECG signal. Now normalization is uh, very important because uh, membership functions will need to be designed accordingly. So the question is if uh, normalization is working as expected because from memory we had this uh, adaptive normalization that will just uh, get improved as you have more waveforms coming through the main thing is that we want to be able to review on the front panel on the html page how the flask how the fuzz logic system is making the actual decision so we need to display essentially all the parameters of the fuzzy logic system would it be better for you to provide prompts for github copilot to do the actual coding and improve the current script. Integrating a front-end display to show how the fuzzy logic system in your Flask app makes decisions is a great idea. This will improve transparency and understanding of the system for users. To achieve this, you'll need to modify both the back-end, Flask app, and the front-end, HTML, JavaScript. Here are prompts that can be used to guide further development, potentially with GitHub Copilot or other coding assistance tools. Enhance the JSON response. Modify the analyze underscore waveform route to include more detailed information in the response. This should include the raw feature values, frequency, peaks, amplitude, their normalized values, and details about the fuzzy logic decision-making process, like the degree of membership in different fuzzy sets. Prompt. Modify flask route to include detailed fuzzy logic analysis data in the response, such as raw and normalized feature values, and fuzzy set memberships. Prompt. Modify flask route to include detailed fuzzy logic analysis data in the response, such as raw and normalized feature values, and fuzzy set memberships. Logging or debug mode. Implement a logging or debug mode in the Flask app that provides detailed console outputs of the fuzzy logic processing steps. Prompt. Create a debug mode in Flask app to log the steps in fuzzy logic analysis for troubleshooting. Display analysis data. Extend the front end to display the additional data received from the back end. This could be in the form of a table or a series of divs that update with each analysis. Prompt. Write JavaScript code to dynamically update the HTML page with detailed analysis data received from the Flask back end. Prompt. Write JavaScript code to dynamically update the HTML page with detailed analysis data received from the Flask backend. Interactive visualization. Implement an interactive way to visualize the fuzzy logic data, perhaps using a library like D3.js. This could include graphs showing the degree of membership in different fuzzy sets for the current waveform. Prompt. Develop an interactive visualization for the fuzzy logic analysis data using D3.js or a similar JavaScript library. User control for debug information. Add a toggle on the web page that allows users to turn on, off the detailed analysis display. This enhances the user experience by providing control over the amount of information displayed. Prompt. 
Implement a feature on the web page allowing users to toggle the visibility of detailed fuzzy logic analysis information. Test with diverse data. Ensure that the system is tested with a wide range of ECG waveforms to validate the effectiveness of the fuzzy logic analysis okay, and the normalization okay. So in the back end, yes, it makes sense to include the other details about the fuzzy logic system in the JSON response. Yeah, let's do this uh, one by one. So updating the process uh, data function. It's already returns just the normalized peaks. Yeah, I want to see how the normalization works. Okay, should we just should we just do that? So it's returning the raw and normalized. That's fine. But the thing is, can we do Control I update to return both uh, raw and normalized frequency peaks and amplitude? We want to enhance the fast logical analysis function to include the, and return the degree of membership for each input feature in its respective fuzzy set. Right, so we have uh, frequency membership low, medium, high, amplitude low, medium, high, and a number of peaks, a few, moderate, and many. So the unit test should be a separate file, is it? Ask unit test module, this test will validate the output of the fuzzy logic analysis with a variety of ECG waveforms. <laughs> test, okay. It's not giving me much, is it? Yeah, because it doesn't even have the test uh, waveforms. So the test waveforms actually come from waveforms.js. Okay, the testing doesn't work because the actual waveforms are in waveforms JavaScript file. So Python testing would not work. Let's move on though to the front end uh, changes. Since the waveforms are generated and processed within the JavaScript environment, Python-based testing wouldn't be directly applicable. Let's move on to modifying the front end to display the detailed fuzzy logic analysis from the Flask back end. So the JavaScript fetch request, so this will be in game logic, it's a fetch. Uh, let's do it with control I, analysis result, analysis data. Let's go back for a sec, select the whole thing and put the prompt in the chat. I'm just trying to understand how it all works together or doesn't. To control shift Z. Analyze waveform, content type, body JSON stringify. Okay, obviously that's better. Remember, the goal is to ensure that the data types being passed to and used within the fuzzy logic system are consistent and as expected. Okay, let's go. Those process data, which should be okay. Let's print it out. Yet yeah, the normalization, obviously, it doesn't work. So we have frequency, row is zero, normalized zero, peaks, row is two, normalized zero, amplitude, yet yeah, those do not work, let's see. The issue is now clear from the debug information you provided. The processed underscore data contains dictionaries for each feature, frequency, peaks, amplitude, with both raw and normalized values. However, the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function expects float values, not dictionaries. Here's how you can resolve this. Update your fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function to handle the dictionary format of processed underscore data. This makes sense. Regarding your updated Python script for the Flask application, it looks like you've made significant changes to handle the fuzzy logic analysis and the data returned. The script now appears to process the ECG data, apply fuzzy logic analysis, and then extract the degree of membership for each input feature. This is a good approach for providing more detailed analysis results. However, ensure that in the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function, the data passed to abnormality underscore analysis, inverter floats. You might need to modify these lines. These lines should extract the normalized float values from the data dictionary, similar to what was discussed in the previous solution. We need to do the same for the game logic JavaScript file. I'll uh, share 
the updated script in the next prompt. Please let me know how to change it as I'm still getting errors. This is the output of the terminal. The error you're encountering, object of type state for simulation is not JSON serializable, typically occurs when trying to convert an object to JSON that isn't natively serializable by Python's JSON module. In your Flask app, this is likely happening because the return value from the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function includes objects that can't be directly converted to JSON. The issue probably lies in the attempt to include the fuzzy logic system state or other complex objects in the JSON response. Python's JSON module can handle basic data types like strings, numbers, lists, and dictionaries, but it cannot serialize custom objects like those from scikit-fuzzy without some additional processing. You need to extract only the serializable data from these objects before including them in the JSON response. Typically, this means converting the relevant information into standard Python data types, like floats, ints, lists, or dicts. Here's how you can modify the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. Can you actually do this for me instead of... To ensure that your Flask app handles the modified return structure of the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function correctly, you need to update the root that calls this function. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. Update the root to handle the new return structure. The analyze underscore waveform root should be modified to handle the dictionary returned by the fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis function. Extract the relevant data from the dictionary returned by fuzzy underscore logic underscore analysis and format it into a JSON serializable format. Here's an updated version of the analyze underscore waveform root incorporating these changes. Error handling. The try accept block will catch any exceptions, providing a useful error message and a 500 status code. This is crucial for debugging and ensuring your app doesn't crash on unexpected inputs. Okay, so I think that error actually went away. And yeah, now we're actually having trouble with the actual with the numbers themselves. Yeah, because if we have I think we I don't have the technical uh, issue anymore, but now we have a problem with the numbers it's themselves, uh, particularly with how the normalization works. Well, it actually it doesn't work very well. Here is the terminal output. The issues you're encountering seem to stem from two main areas, the normalization process and the handling of fuzzy logic analysis in your Flask application. The normalization process seems to be not working as expected, with some values being normalized to 0 or 1, which might not be accurate. The normalization function is crucial as it ensures that the input values for the fuzzy logic system are scaled appropriately. Revisit normalization logic, check the logic in your normalize function. Ensure it correctly handles the range of values you expect for frequency, peaks, and amplitude. Be particularly cautious about how the minimum and maximum values are updated and used. Data range consideration. Consider the range of values your ECG data might have. Ensure that the global min, max values are being updated in a way that makes sense for your data. For example, if the range of your data is not wide enough, it might lead to incorrect normalization. The error float, argument must be a string or a real number, not state for simulation, indicates a mismatch in the expected data type for the fuzzy logic system's inputs. The other error regarding crisp output calculation suggests that the fuzzy rules might not be adequately defined for the given inputs. Basically, we have this game on barnicaos.com. You can go on the main page and play play it yourself and you need to click on abnormal ECG like this and then your score goes up and this will measure your performance this looks very much abnormal I don't remember the ratio between normal no this looks normal EG so if I ECG so when I do not click on it it will give me a correct rejection which is good this should be a no correct rejection so my score went to 10 this is abnormal so that's i clicked on it so that's a hit this is normal now a correct rejection normal again correct rejection should be 40. this one is normal so coming in a row and once you get to 50 it will start going faster just because you're an expert in detecting uh, ecg types this is obviously abnormal yeah every 50 points it will start going uh, faster that was abnormal as well this is abnormal it was missing one of the peaks this is abnormal it's missing the last peak this is abnormal it's missing this um, downward peak after the r peak and so on and so forth so what we done what uh, so you can go play this game we have a video where I play this game and get to about a thousand points so see if you can beat me 
and it should be easy once you know what the uh, normal ECG signal looks like then it's easy easily you can easily detect uh, the ones that are uh, missing certain bits now what we're trying to do uh, in the last couple of streams is make a version of this that will do look at frequency number of peaks a uh, amplitude and uh, use a machine learning in the form of fuzzy logic fuzzy set membership functions and will tell you if the abnormality is uh, likely possible or unlikely in this particular waveform that you have scrolling on the screen so that's what we're trying to do because they have some trouble we have both gpt4 and github copilot trying to help us we're doing this because uh, gpt4 seemed to hold a better context for the whole project whereas uh, copilot has the better for actually modifying the the code so i don't know if this is a good idea or not what do you think the normalization process seems to be not working as expected with some values being normalized to zero or one which might not be accurate the normalization function is crucial as it ensures that the input values for the fuzzy logic system are scaled appropriately right didn't realize we had yeah the normalize function has been funny do we actually have to normalize uh can we actually try uh, not normalizing this will probably mean we need to change the membership functions particularly the range obviously the range the range range deciding not to normalize your data before feeding it into the fuzzy logic system is a significant change and comes with its own set of considerations here's a breakdown of what this entails and the steps you might need to take impact on membership functions if you choose not to normalize your membership functions in the fuzzy logic system must be defined to accommodate the actual range of your data this means that the universe of discourse the range over which your fuzzy sets are defined for each input variable must align with the real world range of these variables potential loss of generality normalization often helps in making a system more general and robust to variations in input scales without normalization your system might become okay, more okay, sensitive okay, okay. to specific ranges of data and might not okay. perform well if the input data characteristics change okay. over time risk of misclassification okay. the effectiveness of fuzzy logic heavily relies on how well okay. the membership functions represent the data okay without normalization oh come on just stop the talking okay you convinced me let's do the normalization can you describe how the normalization currently working and give suggestions as to how to modify it let's review how your current normalization process works and explore potential modifications to improve its effectiveness your current normalization function appears to linearly scale each value based on the global minimum and maximum values for each feature frequency peaks amplitude the process is as follows calculation the function calculates the normalized value by subtracting the minimum value from the current value and then dividing by the range max min python copy code def normalize value min underscore val max underscore val return value min underscore val max underscore val min underscore val if max underscore val equals min underscore val else zero might have to say bye bye for now please leave comments likes go check bodykills.com you know what to do